Kerwin, a junior exercise science major. And I'm Sarah Wilder, and I'm also a junior exercise science major. And today, we'll be learning about assessing the body composition of an individual. Now, body composition is a vital component to um, an individual's health profile because a high percentage and a low percentage can indicate a health risk. Um, body fat helps with cell membrane formation, thermal insulation, as well as metabolic processes, which all may sound kind of fancy, but your body really needs them. And there are a few different ways to assess body composition, but in this particular video, we're gonna be learning about the skin fold method. Are some important terms that you are going to need to know for this assessment video. The first one is the skin fold assessment, which is the indirect measurement of the thickness of subcutaneous adipose tissue. The second is caliper, which is the tool that is going to be used to measure the thickness of a skin fold. And lastly, all of the sites of the skin fold. The first is your chest, which is the skin just medial to your armpit. Next, we have the subscapular site which is just below your scapula. We also have the mid-axillary site, which is right underneath your armpit. Next, we have the superiliac, which is right above the hip bone. Next, we have the abdominal site, which is to the right of your belly button. Next is the triceps, which you're going to take the midpoint between your elbow and your shoulder and take the skin fold right there. Lastly is the thigh site which is the meaty point of your thigh. The purpose of this assessment is to uh, determine the body fat percentage of an individual. That way the administrator has vital information for the person uh, when they're making their health history and in their programs. The necessary equipment for this assessment are as followed. First, you need a pencil to write down your data, and then your data sheet and as well as a calculator, because when you have all of your data, you're gonna be calculating the individual's percentage of body fat. And lastly, and most importantly, the skin caliper, which has two prongs on the end, which we're going to refer to as jaws in this video. And when you release them, that measures the skin fold in millimeters. So before you begin your test, you need to gather a few key information points. The first is their height and weight. So our um, individual today is Holly, and she's a female, and she is 66 inches tall. And you're gonna plug it into this equation to calculate her BMI. And her weight is 146 and a half pounds. Okay, and then this is when your handy dandy calculator comes into play. So you're going to plug it in, and we get a BMI of 23.6. As the test administrator, my primary responsibility is to place the jaws of the skin caliper onto the skin fold of the site we're looking at and to release them slowly, because it kind of hurts, and to hold it on there for one to two seconds, which is the ACSM recommended guideline. So I'm gonna grab onto the skin with my pointer finger and my thumb, and then I put the skin caliper over, one, two, and then I read the number on the skin caliper, and then I record the data. So with the skin fold assessment, you have a three site assessment and a seven site assessment. And so we're going to start with a three. And since Holly's a female, we're going to use her tricep, superiliac, and thigh site. Now if you had a male participant, you're going to want to use the chest, abdominal, and thigh site. So when I do her tricep, I take the midpoint between the acromion process of her shoulder and her elbow, and I take the skin with my index finger and my thumb. And I slowly release the jaws for two seconds, and I get my value of 28 millimeters. Okay, and then my next one that I'm gonna do is the superiliac, which is just above the hip bone.
Now get a value of 18. And lastly is the thigh. And if you have an athlete, like Holly, who's a dancer, it might be a little harder because they have a lot of muscle on the thigh. So you can ask your individual to step up on their toe and flex their calf muscle, and that'll give you a little bit more leeway. And I got 29. So from this point, we will move on to the seven site assessment. Where, which is a little bit more accurate than the three site because you have more data and from um, more of a full body standpoint as opposed to just the three. So the next one we're going to do is the chest, which is the skin right here. All right, and then you write down your data. And the next is your mid axillary, which is kind of underneath your armpit, towards the back. Okay, then you write down your data. And then subscapular, which is just below your shoulder blade. Alright. And then your abdominal, which is to the right of your belly button. What's really important here too is that you're making sure you're taking each of these sites on the right side of the individual's body. And once you have all of your um, sites done one time around, you're going to go through it again twice and get three trials and take the average. But if your trial one and trial two are within one or two millimeters of each other, you can skip the trial three for that site. So here is a picture of our raw data that we collected. So we'll just start from the top and talk about it all the way through. So at the top we have our triceps. So for the first trial we got 28, but then the second one we got a 21 or 20. So since they weren't within uh, one to two millimeters, we had to take a third trial. So that's where we got our 21. So we averaged that out to get 23 millimeters. For the chest, same thing. We didn't get within two millimeters on our first trial two trials, so we had to take a third and then got our average. Same for the mid-axillary, our three trials and then take an average. For subscap, superiliac, and abdominal, and thigh, we all, for those, got within one to two millimeters, so we just had to do two trials for each and then take the average, so it worked out pretty well. Um, so over here by the different uh, sites, you see that we have some marked with an F and then some marked with an M. Those denote our three sites. So the M is obviously for males and then our Fs are for females. And then down here at the bottom, we have the sum of our seven sites, which is all seven sites added up. So we got that to be 117.6 and then for our three sites, it's 66. <laughs> calculations we use to find out our percentage of body fat using the numbers we collected from our skin fold assessments. Up here, the seven site, you plug in our seven site sum into the underlying spot, so there, there, and there. And then this square over here is the age of the participant. The participant, myself, is 21, so you plug in 21 over there. Make sure that you have the right numbers, digits, number of zeros to get the right answer. If you miss one zero, you could mess up the whole calculation. Um, but by plugging in the 117.6 and 21 into the designated areas, we got our number to be 22.86, which is the fitness level for our seven site. And then our three site, it's a little less accurate since it only calculates three sites. But same thing, you plug in the 66 to the underlying area. So there, 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 and over here, there, the 21. Calculate it, make sure you have all the right digits. Then we got 27.0, which is an acceptable level. So some common testing related issues that can come with the skin fold assessment is that your pinches could be inconsistent, which could cause some variation in your data. You might grab some muscle in your pinches and not just fat. So to make sure that you don't do that, you can uh, mark the area where you're pinching so they are consistent with a marker to make sure that you're getting the same area each time you take the pinch 
And then you can also shake the pinch a little bit uh, when you're pinching the skin just to make sure you're getting only fat and not muscle uh, for those athletes who are a little bit more muscular and then obviously physically active people. Um, and then some recommendations. Practice does make perfect, so you might not have the most accurate data the first time you do skin fold assessment, but the more and more you practice, the more you'll get better at it. So in conclusion, body comp is a very vital part to any assessment that you might be doing on a participant. So it is vital that you do take information. So skin fold is very easy. It's cheap, quick, uh, inexpensive. You can do it on a large group of people very quickly. Um, while it isn't as accurate as other body comp assessments such as BOD, POD, or DEXA, this is still very reliable. It is up to 3.5% accurate, so it is very accurate, um, and it's just a great way to measure and uh, assess those individuals for body comp and health risk. So thanks for watching, and good luck with your body comp assessment using Skinfold. Mm -hmm.